it up a little bit early. Um, so I'm here by myself, which is good and bad. I mean, it's bad that you don't get to hear both Bobby and my takes, but it's good in that you get to see um, kind of what I want to do, which is uh, going to be a full process video about how I'm going to build my lineups for the early slate. And I I'm hoping it's somewhat interesting um, and instructive for those of you that, you know, they're either learning how to play. Well, we're all learning how to play, but just kind of see what goes through my head and the difference between good plays and good lineups and good lineups and good lineup portfolios and, and all of that stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to just answer just straight out questions about who I like and whatever. You're going to see who I like as we just kind of go through this. Um, so I'll give just a couple of minutes because I did say it would be 12, but I don't want to run out of time either. Well, th then again, it is uh, 1235 actually. So te technically I do have full 30, 35 minutes. Uh, first thing I'm noticing, it's uh, probably going to have to rerun the projections at some point because it looks as though Goldschmidt is out, although I had him as out anyway. So that's 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 fine. So this is this is what I want to do. So it's a nice easy four game slate. And this is the way I kind of this is my process is the one I'm looking at. First of all, I'm looking at the slate. So there's four games, a 12, a one, and then a three and a four. And that's kind of important. Okay. Um, because in all DFS, it's it's as in all gambling. Well, not all gambling, but um, it's always better to have position on your opponent. In other words, it's always better to to go last if possible. So, uh, if, if there's any you know, any ties, you certainly want to push them back as far as possible because it allows for more flexibility. Things don't go the way that we're that we're expecting. So St. Louis, Cincinnati, and then to some, and then Toronto, Tampa are going to be our first uh, decisions. And the other thing that's interesting to note is that we don't have lineups yet for San Diego, Washington, or Miami, Colorado. Anyway, um, so before we even analyze it, it's important to get a context of what the slate looks like. So there's two little, two earlier games and two later games. And the next thing I look at is weather. Um, Miami, Colorado has a little little rain on the, in the DraftKings app, but I went to Roth and it, you know the, on on Roto Grinders, and he doesn't seem to think there's any any risk, so I'm not factoring weather pretty much at all. So it's kind of a straight slate, four games, and, and we want to analyze it. Now, what I like to do first is just kind of before I even look at the projections, just kind of just eyeball and see who I would think I would want to play. Um, and when you look at this kind of eyeball, it you, you, you'd see right off the bat that that Eflin and Snell would probably be the two best plays, and they're some. I mean, they're reasonably affordable, I guess. I and mean, Snell at eighty nine hundred, I would just imagine without even looking at a projection, is going to be you know the best looking play and probably seventy percent owned. We're going to get to that in a minute. And then you're also looking at you're seeing kind of some really really poor pitching options in general. Um, Manoa. Tough matchup, and he's been kind of struggling. So, uh, and then you have Mikolas, who you know he has a good matchup, but you don't know if he's washed or not. Then you have Weaver, who you know has some strikeout upside, but doesn't really do done much. And then you have the Coors game, which you probably be inclined to avoid pitching wise. And then you have Irvin, who's kind of a cheapo, who's a tough uh, matchup against San Diego. So, without even looking at projections, I would expect something like Snell to be like clearly the best play. And then probably Effin. And then maybe Manoa just because of back talent or something like that. And, and maybe Mikolas. So that's what I'd be expecting. And then with respect to hitting, I, I imagine that San Diego would be a top stack, as would both teams in the Colorado game. So before I would even look at anything, I would just expect Miami and Colorado to look good. And San Diego to probably look good as well. And the other thing I would expect is that because there's really not a lot of really high price pitching, probably get in pretty much whatever you want as far as um as far as uh as far as your hitting goes uh, okay 
So um, let's then, the next thing I want to do is take a look at the sheets. So uh, this is about an hour old. So, the, the, you know, it might have some errors with, with, with lineups and stuff. But the first thing I want to look at is I rated all these by sheets value score. And you'll see that from a pitching perspective, I mean, it's, it's not even remotely close. So you have Snell at 31, my, the sheets value score, and then all the way down to 22 for Mikolas for the next one. And then after that, you have Manoa at 21, Weaver at 20, Eflin at 19. You know, so, so what you have here, and then down to Gare or whatever, is that you have a clear, clear SP1 with respect to the sheets and a pretty decent drop to the next. So you have a 31 sheets value score and then all the way down to 22. So you would think that you'd want to put Snell in and then pick between the uh, between the next two guys, okay, uh, and between the next four guys. And it seems to make a lot of sense. Um, before we even go to the stack tools, the next thing I'll notice is that you have all of these St. Louis guys when you rate by sheets value score to be extremely strong plays um, more than the Miami's, for example, with respect to value. Now, again, we're just rated by sheets value score, not by fantasy points. That's something to notice that San Diego and St. Louis look to be the two top ones. And then Miami a little below. Now, when you do rate them by fantasy points though, um, you, you know, you're getting birdie up there. Dilla Cruz and Cooper. So you're just kind of looking at, again, we were seeing what I thought. Miami, Colorado, St. Louis. Um, yeah. So that's, again, so instinctively we were right that it can be Snell plus a bunch of nonsense. And instinctively we we're right with respect to San Diego, right? Miami and Colorado. But we're, we didn't expect to see so much St. Louis. So, so before we look at the stacks, we're going to think about San Diego, again, uh, Snell with the other guys, then Miami, St. Louis, and San Diego, and Colorado. Right? So but then what I'd like to do is, again, we haven't even run anything. Let's take a look at the stacks sheet, and we're going to analyze them both by raw stack and modified stack. So first in raw stacks, so just who's going to get the most points um, San, San, San Diego and Miami significantly ahead, 48. And then St. Louis and Colorado. So, again, it's what we thought, St. Louis and Miami, and then St. Louis and Colorado. And then when you sort by modified stack, once again, St. Louis, San Diego, and then a big drop. So that's what you're going to see is, is Snell with, with X and then either San Diego – St. Louis, Miami, and Colorado. Okay. So um, what you can do first is we could we could try to build something. So, I mean, let's uh, – because I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be doing MME, and I'm going to be doing um, uh, a big buy-in. So if you, if you did your big buy-in, let's say you put Snell here, and if you had to pick between the others, this is, this is what I like to do. Um, considering that they're all very similar with respect to value score, uh, let's, let's sort of my, by position, actually sort of by pitchers. I mean, all four of these guys are pretty much the same. What I'd probably be inclined to do is just take the guy that's the lowest owned, which would be Weaver. And what's interesting about that is if you play Weaver, you are going to be getting him a little bit of leverage against um, uh, against what's probably going to be a chalky St. Louis stat, right? Because St. Louis has showed up as a really good value. So if you played Weaver as you know as your as your SP two of choice, it's number one the lowest owned, and number two, you probably get some some leverage now. So you have Snell and Weaver, so you have a little bit of ownership break there. 
Um, and then it'd be a question of what type of, you know, what stack you want to pick. Now I, I'm more of a purist than Bobby is. So I still, even though it's only four games, I do want to I prefer to play a five man stack. So what I'm looking at here is let's take a look at the stacks again. Now let's just see which is the lowest owned of these. They all look very similar, right? I mean, I would say that, yeah, Miami and San Diego kind of stand out, but they, Significantly higher ownership in this Colorado idea. So it looks as though Colorado would probably be my 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 stack that I would pick because they're sort of similar, but have they have significantly lower ownership. And the other one I would identify here is Washington. Um, Washington, they have a good va value score ranking, and they're really really low owned. So. Let's just kind of see what this would look like. So let's put in, uh, let's first do the Colorados and let's just use, we can, listen, we could probably spend for the most expensive guys. So let's put them in and see, just see what it looks like. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some fun. We have Saberson built for us. And then you're, you might be so, sort of surprised at what, what, what comes of this. Now, again, we don't have the lineups yet, which is pretty important. But again, because this is late, um, uh, we could, you know, we could, we could, we can mess around a little bit. The one thing I like to do is when you try to figure out which of these guys to, to play, let's let's try to identify guys that show up in both the value ranking and the raw point ranking. And that would be Grichuk and Profar. So those would be I would consider the the uh, the priority. So Grichuk. And profile. Now, again, this assuming all these guys are playing. Now you have 4,200 per man left, so you probably could do kind of whatever you want here. So let's put in the rest of the, you know, just these these other guys. So, and again, we don't even know exactly who's playing, which is going to be interesting. So we play all the outfielders. We'll play the uh, we play the expensive catcher if we want, and then. Well, Bryant is actually another outfielder, so that's not going to work. So we have to kind of figure it out. Um, let's put in, and again, we could always we could always tweak this as we get to it. McMahon, um, I don't have him even playing for some reason. Um, Diaz, Grichuk, Taglia. So let's just put these four in, and then just for fun, let's put these. Here's the thing about the Washington. What makes the Washington piece interesting is that you get leverage against Snell. Now, in a four-game slate, I think that's I think that's something you might want to consider. Okay. So if you were going to play the Washingtons, for example, then you really don't want to get too fancy. So let's just see what these guys look like. And then we're going to use Saberson to actually build. So First guy I love playing, and we'll get back to Colorado in a minute, is Stone Garrett's only 2,800. I mean, that's that's an amazing play. I mean, again, presuming that, remember, we're fading a 60% owned plus, or maybe more Snell. So if we can get away with this, um, this is, this, I mean, this is, this is four game slate stuff. I might actually try it if you want to know the truth. Um, so you play Manessis, Garrett, Thomas, and then Alex Call is another guy. Twenty, I mean twenty three hundred. I mean hell, this is uh, this is pretty good. Um, you play even a four man, and then what you could do is then play whatever Colorado guys you want, you could even play Miami's. You know what I mean? Because they're highly owned, but the rest of them, but, but you're comparing them with what we're pairing them with Washington, which is pretty interesting. Okay. Um, so we're going to need a little help. So why don't we put this in the Sabre Sim and see what kind of lineups Saber Sim would build. Remember, we haven't done anything yet. I, I reserved some dummy lineups. We got 20 minutes, which is literally plenty of time. 
Now, again, there could be lineup changes. Like Arias probably isn't going to play for Miami. Um, but let's uh, – you already have the lineup the, – uh, the lineups uh, – the, the, the projections in there. And let's just build here. And see, let's build 50 lineups, and I'll be curious to see what kind of shows up here. All right. Wow. So, as I mentioned, as I suggested, Luke Weaver is actually coming out as the highest owned pitcher, and Blake Snell is coming in third, which is extremely – I think that's kind of cool, actually, in a way. Um, the other thing is let's take a look at the stack types that's being churned out here. Now, again, in a, in a, in a four-game slate, we can get a little bit more you know, non-stacky, but I still don't only want a 4-2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the 4-2s, and the rest we can kind of keep. Knowing that we got to watch for Arias or whatever. Um, let's take a look at the team stacks. So the team stacks has actually given us 40% Miami and surprisingly, wow, 40% Toronto. I mean, who would have thought that, right? And I think the reason, again, is because I think the Zeppelin is going to take money and you're getting a little bit of, of leverage there. And you're getting San Diego. And what you're not getting is Washington, right? So, again, Saberson does a really, really good job of factoring in leverage and factoring in whatever. So... In MME, I'm now kind of stuck with this decision, right? Um, I am going to play 50 lineups, even though it's only four games. And and it's giving me this. But I think I want to get a little bit more of the Washington, just because they rated high value-wise. Um, so what I'm going to do – well, hold on. Before I do that, let me look at the pitching um, breakdown. It did say – Weaver number one, but I'm getting everybody. I'm getting a little bit of everybody, which is fine. And these are the three main guys. Oh, look at this. I'm getting zero of the um, the Eflin. Very interesting. Wow. Well, I guess because he's only projected 14 fantasy points and he's 10 8. <laughs> um, so. I guess we would leave, can leave the pitching the same. And then with stacked heist, we can leave the same. And there's one thing we're going to have to change. I'll show you what in a second. Let's, 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 let's have some fun. Let, let's, let's move. Let's go 30% Washington. This way we can get a little bit of leverage against Snell. Um, and I kind of like this. So when we do that, there's a couple of things you'll notice that there's a lot of lineups that are really leaving a lot of money on the table. You have 48,000 and something like that. I'm going to show you what, what this all looks like in a second players. So most now it's 80% Weaver. Boy, oh boy. Can you get away with that? I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable with 80% Weaver. So I'm just going to reduce it. I'll reduce it to 60. So basically, Manoa and Weaver are my two top pitchers. Wow. With zero Eflin and under on Snell. Hey, this is four-game slate stuff. Um, with stack types, again, I have to tweak this a little bit because I don't want any three two twos. But there's one other thing we're going to have to change. I'm going to show you that in a second. 4-3 is mm, I guess it's sort of okay. So what we're going to do is check this out. You got 20 minutes still, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is just, just I don't know why Saberson does this, but if I'm not mistaken, especially on four game slates, you're going to see that we are probably going to end up leaving money on the table. Like I probably more, than we expect. So let's just put all these in and now, just to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So when we look at the lineups here, again, it's fine because we're not actually playing these. I mean, look at all these monies being left on the table, 1,200, 1,000, 1,200, 1,800, 1,200, 1,900, 1,800, 1,200. 
So if you're using Saber Sim, you have to make a choice. You know, like like is it is it worth? And the reason why this is happening is that I'm specifying these 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 stacks, like these types of stacks. And so it's 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 preferring like you see it like a lineup like this, like it's leaving two thousand on the table because I'm insisting on more stacks. So like it's giving me this five six from Washington where I could probably go up and play a pretty good one off at four k. So it's an interesting decision of what I want to do if I want to minimum to set a minimum salary. Now I usually don't, but because it's a four game slate and because um it's not as important to be stack you know stack stickler i am going to go back and redo these with a minimum salary um now i'm not going to go too crazy but i'll go 49 3 actually it's four game slate so let's go 49 2 so we're going to we're going to redo this with 49,200 minimum. And we're going to see how that impacts what types of stuff that we get. Now, again, I'm still not going to, you'll, you'll see what I do with as far as the stack, uh, stack quality. Um, okay. First of all, as far as, far as exposure, and this is all fine, Manoa, Weaver, Snell, and then, then, then these guys, as far as team stacks, Mostly San Diego, Miami, Cincinnati, Toronto, St. Louis. So again, it didn't let me play Washington. So we'll 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 pump up a little bit more of Washington, which is of course what what did we say? That's going to probably reduce Snell um, a little bit. And then let's look at stack types again. So three two two is a little bit too fishy. Three three two. I think I'll keep that. I think I'll keep everything else the same. Um, so what we have now is again we we're, we're pretty pretty good except we're missing some some lineups uh, specifically Miami right but it's fine we can go back a little bit later and deal with that so what so let's again we're, this is what we're gonna play in the MMA and again look at what we've done right we started with our initial takes then we went to the raw projections and saw what we kind of want to play and then we went and um, ran SaberSim, because what SaberSim is really good at is finding leverage and, and finding ownership gaps and things like that, and, and making sure your correlation is what it's supposed to be. And then we will do this, and we'll just kind of put these in. Now, there's one other thing that I want to do, which, again, I don't do as often as I should. So first, we're going to upload these. So the one thing that I don't do the greatest job with, which I'm going to learn to do a little bit better for the purposes of, of keeping everybody happy, is making sure that the lineups that I'm creating are for, are for the contest that I'm playing. So like, for example, like the, the 50 lineups that I built, these are for a small slate, which is right, 10K to 50K in entries. So it's important to kind of look and see what, um, what these contests actually are that I'm playing. So the relay throw is 7,800 entries. So is that kind of what we're supposed to do? No, it's actually a little bit less. We actually need to be a little less random. So let's put this in. We'll do this little change. Okay. Okay. It's not going to change things too much, as you'll see, but it, it, it more caters to the type of, of tournament that I'm playing with respect to the relay throw. Okay. It's a smaller slate. It's less entries than, than usual. So that's the one thing I want to do. Let's, let's um, change that. And then we're going to do something which, again, this is – you definitely are supposed to do it. But people don't. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. All right. So let's let's change these. Let's again. Let's keep this one the 444. But this is something we're gonna improve on. So now now we're good. Except this 
one buy-in, this big buy-in, is a 444, okay? Um, oh, so Diaz is out. All right, so Diaz is on what team? So he's on Tampa, so we have to make some changes. So this is live, so we have to, we have to do this kind of on the spot here. Um, so, but the one thing I look at is this, this 444 is certainly should not be the same type of lineup as the relay throw, because in this lineup, it's only 200 people. So let's go back. Okay. And we are going to, instead of that, we're going to take it for 100 to 1k people. And you still get this as your main lineup. Okay, so that's fine. So we're going to keep this. Manoa Snell, is that the same thing? Um, let's see. Uh, Manoa Snell, it's, uh, Diaz, Guerrero, and then St. Louis, Edmonton, Gorman, DeYoung, Mercado, Fraley, Newport, whatever. Okay. Um, all right, so now what we're so we're at this point now, now we've, we, we noticed with 13 minutes to post that Yandy Diaz is scratched. Um, it's 110, but now we have to make a decision. Do I want to rerun all of the projections, or do I want to just late swap this for this one guy, or do I want to do something in the middle? Um, now, and see, we oh, we already see the profile is out, so the Colorado, um, the Colorado lineups are in. So it's up to me, right? It's up to us how how much I want to do. But one thing you could do that's kind of like a good cross in that you could just kind of replace these guys. But what I want to do is this. Let's rerun these. Except we'll take, we'll just, um, we'll go back here to the home page. And let's find the guys that are out. So you'll see that it was the Colorado team whose projections were changed. So let's, we're going to resort these by Sabres in projections. And you'll see that Austin Wins is in. So we'll give him a projection. And then where is Profar? Um, Profar is out, so we will get rid of him. Okay. And then Diaz for Tampa. So we'll go to the, 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 the Tampa guys. And we got to give all these guys a projection that we didn't have before. And there's not that much different between pot parodies is out and Diaz out. So we should be good. Siri is out. All right. So we should be okay. So now let's re, we're just going to rerun everything. So we're going to rerun. Again, first we're going to deal with the relay throw. So again, if I want to rerun all the projections, um, it would be a little bit more exact. But it's but but you could also just, just swap out, which is much worse. What this does is it just it allows SaberSim to just kind of replace your whatever. Okay, so our eyes is out too. Um yeah, so let's do that then as well. So let's go back to to home. And let's go back also within Miami, since Miami came and did this, and we'll get rid of him. We'll just basically change all the Miami guys. So Arias, where is he? Baez is out. Cooper is out. And then we'll just go ahead and just rerun these. So let's rerun 50 lineups. 10 minutes, plenty of time. Okay, so... Um, Let's again. So now let's take a look at what we have. Stack types. Wow, pretty uh, pretty pure actually. But what we didn't do, I guess, did we do the? Uh, 
We do have 49-2. That was still in there. Team stacks, San Diego, St. Louis, Miami, Toronto, Colorado, Tampa. Again, 15% Washington. Is that enough? Mm, I don't know. I'm a little greedy. Let's 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 do a little bit more. So we're the 25% Washington, which is then probably going to reduce Snell even more. Yep. Well, I mean, he's still pretty high owned, but I still am not getting any of the uh of the effort, which is what it is, I guess. Um, so let's do this again. So let's then put in in the okay, this, this, this is a small slate. 1K to 10K, which is good. And I'm going to show you what I was going to do in a second with that 444, which, again, not bad. Very few people do, but it's definitely something you should do. I'll get to this in a second. Right, so let's put this in. I'm going to upload this. And then I just want to make sure that, again, that this top lineup is actually okay given the small slate things and Weaver, Snell, Kirk, and all that with Friedel. Is it the set, set that lineup? Or, yeah. Uh, no, it's actually different. No, it's the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, to make sure Kiermaier. Okay. Um, so typically it does it, so it doesn't even matter in this case, but here's something that again I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make it my point to do. And this is what people do. You you build like a lineup for the 444 or something like that in the big buy-in. And what people always do is they say, well, I'm gonna make sure to put that one in my in my lottery just in case that cash. Just in case it smashes. And it's what people do with their cash lineups too. They make sure they put their cash lineups in their M, in their GPP lineups, you know, just in case. It's just really bad. Just don't do it. It's it's just giving money away. It's not giving a lot of money away, but it's just giving money away. So so I, so I wouldn't do it. Um. So that that's pretty much what I have with eight minutes to spare. But one thing I want to do is just this is kind of like asking for trouble. But let's just see. What would happen if I just use the Saber Sim projections as opposed to um and I could always change by the way to F1 if I feel like it. I have zero of it. But if I just ran 50 with just Saber Sim and didn't use like my other stuff, what I would end up with. Now, again, this is not the end of the slate for me because, you know, if they change something or if I want to do some late swaps, I'm going to probably have to come in and do that. But um, um, it looks to be somewhat similar. You know, I'd be getting, I'd be getting Cincinnati, St. Louis, Tampa. We get some Washington. And... Well, I would get some Eflin, by the way, if I used straight Saberson. But, hey, whatever it is. Um, they would also want me to play a couple of Kyle Freeland lineups, which I probably don't want to do either. And they also want me to play Braxton Garrett, which, are, oh, my God, they want me to play 35% Garrett if I just use the Saberson projections. Wow. Um, okay. So that's pretty much the end of the main, uh, the, the early slate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat because I've, I've not been able, hopefully Goldie did it because I have not yet um, done sheets for the early, for the main slate. So with any luck, this is really asking for it. I'm really, I'm really taking going on a limb here. I'm hoping that Goldie's projections are on here. Well, first, for, this is this is a listen. Rule one is you should never like you should never demo when you haven't tested it first. But let's just make sure that I can log in. That's always it's always a it's always a little bit of 
of variants. Oh, you know, I want to suggest something to you, Goldie, if you wouldn't mind. What I'm doing is I'm going to be pulling up Goldie's sheets here. Um, MLB projections. Is this going to be the day we don't get them? It's going to be the day they, that my, the, the site doesn't load. No, here we go. All right, so DraftKings Goldie. So first of all, what I would recommend, by the way, Goldie, I don't know if you have it set up. I, I wouldn't sort by um, by alphabet, alphabet, alphabetized. Um, I would sort by something else. I mean, I like to sort my own by sheets value score, but, it, but I think you should sort by something different, um, whether it be salary, fantasy points, something like that. I think it's, for me, like if I were a user, and I looked at this, I would first, the first thing I'd want to see is the top plays. I wouldn't want to see like AA Ron every single, you know what I mean? Like every single time. So that, that would be the first thing I would say. Um, the, so here's the deal. So I'm going to look, I'm going to sort by sheets value score, just kind of get things going. And the first thing I'm going to look at, again, for the late slate is just like sort of hockey in a way. Well, first we'll forget. We'll get talking in a second. But let's look at pitching. So you'll see already that, that Logan Gilbert's kind of like a lock, right? Um, he's fourteen sheets value points higher than everybody else. So that's the first thing. Um, uh, yeah. So Logan Gilbert's going to be the chalkiest pitcher. It's going to be the best pitcher, and that's going to be something that you have to you have to deal with. And the next bunch of pitchers, as as in this slate, just look very similar to me, like Sears, Nola, Carrasco, and a little bit of a drop maybe to Schmidt and the others. So it looks as though the next pitcher is going to be either Sears or Nola. So, again, I, I do the same thing. Like when I just kind of gaze at this, I see, look, I see Sears, 19%, Nola, 35%. Carrasco 24. Okay, let's just play Sears, right? So, so that would be really the first thing I would do is 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 identify Sears as probably my top GPP play, um, and I might not even play Gilbert as a result. It depends on what the hitting looks like. Now, the one thing that that boy, I got to get your projections, dude, into my stack models so that you can create stacks also. Yeah, we got. I got. I got to get that to you. I, I, you know, I keep forgetting. I mean, we have so much on our mind as far as what to do with the site. Um, so when we look at just by pure fantasy points for the whole slate, I mean, the first thing I notice is Philly, Philly, Atlanta, Atlanta. And I'm, I haven't looked at the games yet. You know, we're going to look at them in a second. I'm going to have to. We're going to look at this. Philly, Philly. Oh, so you get a Logan Webb bullpen game. That's what's going on here with this. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one, actually. Um, so you 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 round everything to the to the point one zero, right? I see that because I see a bunch of the guys tied at exactly ten point up. Um, okay, so I would say Philly, Atlanta, something like that. Now, what I like to do is again, if I have my own sheet, I would look at. By rated by sheets value score and forget the pitchers for a second. Again, it's Philly, Yankees, Baltimore, Atlanta, Phillies again. So Phillies. Wait, we gotta how do I go scroll down? I don't even know. How, how do you scroll down on this? I I, I don't even know how to use this. So it's how terrible I am. How can I scroll down to get to these others? Is it like a Chrome thing? This is why I always, I, use, I always use the spreadsheet. I, I never even use it from, from TrueDFS. So here's something to work on, right? Is it, a, is, it a, is it my problem? Is it say something the way I'm using Chrome wrong that I can't scroll? Well, there's no way you only have this amount, right? Because let me see the difference between that one and, and, and mine. Um, well, mine goes, I mean, it goes down a little bit more. So I can go page two, page three. Let's see what, let's see, DraftKings Goldie. Let's see. 
And why is DraftKings Goldie only 13? I don't know what's going on here. Let's 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 hang on. Let's reset this. Let's see what's going on over here. It is all there. Just reload. So what what happened? All right, so let's see. Okay, there's Aaron. Okay, they, here they all are. You just got to go page two, page three. Okay, so I don't know. It's a little. Uh, so this sheet's value score. We got to get DraftKings Goldie. Now I'm getting yesterday's pitching again. Why is this happening? Oh no. Okay, so there's Gilbert. Okay, so anyway, San Fran, Philly, San Fran, San Fran, San Fran. And you guys think this is not what I, this is exactly what I do before you even look at the games. Like I just kind of look at this. All right, so then let's go to the games then. Let's see what's up. Let's go to the games and see what's up here. Um, upcoming. All right, so let's take a look. So again, if we were looking at the games, uh, you know, kind of game by game, I would say, okay, Yankees, Baltimore, Gibson kind of stinks. Yankees are probably a good stack. Schmidt, probably an okay secondary option. Philly, Atlanta. So no lie, I would imagine would be a pretty good play. I mean, Atlanta is pretty bad against righties in general. And Philly and Noah every once in a while has a good game still, so I think he's in play. Dodd, no thanks. But, yeah, so I would imagine that Philly would be kind of a number one or two stack. Let's take a look in a second. Uh, San Francisco, Milwaukee. Okay, so it's not a Logan Webb. I thought it was going to be a Logan Webb bullpen game, but it's actually a Jacob Junis bullpen game, making that completely unplayable, which is nice. Uh, I have no pitcher for Milwaukee. Mets, Cubs, you have Hendricks making his debut off the injured list. Oh, my God. And then a possibly washed Carlos Carrasco, who's putting up just nothing. What a slate for pitching. you got to be kidding me. And then you have Oakland, Seattle, where Gilbert is, is I mean, he's going to be, what is he going to be in the big, big, big buy, 90% owned? I mean, there's literally nothing to play. It's him and Nola. Unless you want to play Sears. I mean, Sears, if I'm not mistaken, last time they played, he was pretty awesome. Four hits, no runs. Seven strikeouts, two walks against Seattle. You know, so this is probably actually, it's going to be either Gilbert, Nola, Sears. I don't think literally anybody else is going to play, except maybe Schmidt. What a, what a dumb slate this is going to be. So what do you do? You play you play Gilbert. Can you play Gilbert and Nola? That's an interesting question, right? Well, probably not if you want to play Philly. But there's some guys you could play. Like you could play Bohm, 3,300. Um, tell you what, Turner at 5K, is. I think that's pretty reasonable. I mean, you could probably just get most of these guys in, actually. Um Stock play. So, yeah, I mean, you could – maybe you should just play Gilbert and Nola and just, just be done with it. But Sears would be the other guy I would take a shot at. All right, so let's let's do an early – let's do actually an early Sabersim um, build just for fun. Oh, so let's do this. I'm afraid I'm afraid to look. Is there any chance that your, your projections are in Sabersim? We're going to find out. We're going to find out live. There's no way. There's literally no chance. Let's take a look. Here we go. Ready? MLB, Saber Sim, Maine. Is it going to have the Goldie projections? No. Why would it have the Goldie projections? Um, yeah. Could you please post that in, 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 in admin so that I don't lose my mind I'm doing it for the 800th time? So, what we'd have to do, Sigh, is go back to projections. 
And I'm not giving up on it. I mean, this is ridiculous. We go back to projections. And then what you can do always is go to Goldie and then download these and then go straight into regular Saber Sim and then it's easy. And then we'll upload all the player projections. I mean, this is. Let's go. And then they're all there. Hey, hey, look at that. So then let's build 50 lineups. Get an early look at the main slate builds. I mean, it's just as fast for me. I'm just, we, we're supposed to be able to go straight over there. And wow, only 72% Gilbert. I really thought it would be 100, which is sort of interesting, I guess. Who else are they letting me play? Sears? Only 4% Nola? I mean, well, listen, this makes sense. This may, listen, someone else can play Kyle Gibson. No, it's not going to be me. Um, you telling me that Carlos Carrasco's can be 25% owned? Okay, sure. Um, look through the team stacks. 65% San Francisco. Let's go. That sounds good to me. Who's Atlanta play? Um, oh, Atlanta. Stacking Atlanta against Nola. Here we go. Saberson's really in a mood today. So what we will do, just so that we have it, we will, I am going to uh, replace my lineups with that. Goldie, I'll tell you what. So I am doing something tonight that I probably only do like once a year now. You want to guess what that is? It was, it was the exact same did it a year ago as well. Something I used to do more often, but this is the first time I'm doing it in, is it a year? Yeah, I think so, since, since, since last year at this time. I'm going to tell you as soon as I put these lineups in. If anybody wants to guess, Correct, correctly, you win, you know, what do you win? You win, you win nothing, but whatever it is. Um, so what, what, what am I, hold on, let me look at the chat. What am I doing? So they're playing what? No way you won't want to play. Um, but yeah, so tonight is my uh, one year. I have my uh, charity poker tournament. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, my uh, if this 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 tournament goes way back. You know, my, my a good friend of mine. They, they raise a lot of money for for, for uh, nephrotic syndrome, which is a, which is a kidney disease, and this goes all the way back. I was there the first time they did their first poker tournament. I was like the bounty. I still offer myself up as a bounty every year. We got a couple of hundred people, and um, the, the, of like four years ago, four years ago or so, I actually got Chris Moneymaker to come. He like flew in from freaking Tennessee to be like a like a celebrity, a celebrity kind of dude hanging out. He was awesome. He was awesome. I asked Phil Helmuth if he would come. They he wanted like charge me. You know what I mean? Like, so. Um, I'm doing that tonight. I've never cashed in this tournament, which is fine. Um, uh, it's one of those, you know, where, where people share cards, they don't care. You know what I mean? It's fine. It's like, uh, it's just, it's just for, it's just for charity and it's all for fun. But, um, it's, it's a little tilting just to play poker in general, honestly play live but i think i'd rather play i'm wondering if i'd rather play the live tournament the live charity tournament where nobody cares 
or the live like you know world series poker turn where everybody's like super serious i don't know actually i think i think they're both i can't think of anything i'd rather do less than both things but at least this one the uh you know for a good cause i suppose um yeah so i'm gonna be doing that which but i'm, I'm gonna be i think i'm gonna be going live first before we go, or go over there so i think i am going to be showing up a little bit later to deal with this type of build which by the way i don't think i can play this build this build's way too chunky um but at least something to, to look at leaving 700 dollars on the table so uh i do have to take a look to see if anybody is scratched from my lineups that i have now and then i guess i'm gonna get going here let's just take a look here uh, it's tennis, which is a disaster, by the way. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm... Oh, no, Ruiz. All right, so Ruiz is scratched, and that's not till 405, so I have time, but I have to deal with that. So if Ruiz is scratched, I'll just... You know, just when those lineups come out, I'll just rerun everything. I'll just kind of rerun anything. So here's another thing, by the way, that we will... that I like to do is... I don't know how anybody likes to sweat their games. Let's look at the ownership. So Weaver is 20%. You have, got to remember this. Manoa's not in yet. Uh, so Weaver, oh, and, and and the, what's Mikolas? Oh, they don't have any of these up yet. Okay. Gorman, 38% owned. So the Cardinals, as I suspected, was um, was pretty chalky. I really should have played Weaver in the big buy-in, but uh, I suck, I guess. I'm also going to be doing. Um, do you know how tilting this is to see this guy is being out without? Even though I have like three hours, I know I'm going to fix it. It's like so annoying. Um, so it did end up with an F one after all, huh? A couple of them. Okay, that's fair enough. So Weaver, he went three outs and one one walk. Wow, he's usually more of a strikeout guy, but I've been through one inning. Who cares? Um, well, this is interesting. You know what I did? I screwed up. Look at some of these lineups I have. Like a thousand left on the table. I guess it didn't take my my minimum of forty nine three. So you know, but the good thing is I have late swaps, so I, I can fix all of that. Actually, you want to do that now? All right, let's do that. Let, let let's show people how to do this. So this is what we're gonna do. Oh, can we do that? Can we change the? Uh, the minimums? Let's try it. So we got to get rid of Ruiz. So let's go back and we'll go into early. You know, everybody's gone. So if I'm really, literally talking to myself, that's fine. Just me, you, me and you, me and you, Goldie. Somebody else. I, I don't care. Um, so why don't we go back to what team was Ruiz on? Washington, right? So let's go back to Washington. And why why do we have Ruiz in my lineups at all? Let's see, is Ruiz on Washington? Is that hey, Calvert Ruiz? I don't know why I have him in there. All right, anyway, so let's do this. Let's let's late swap. So let's go download here. And then we will put this up in the Saber Sim. Hang on, let's get this first. Oh, because this is Saber Sim's projections. Hmm. Um, okay, so for now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to upload the originals. We're not going to do a full re redo. And then we're going to go back, right? Because it was Washington. Somebody's bothering me. And then we'll get rid of this guy. Oh, he's, he's in, he's in. Seven, nine, ten. Ruiz is out. And then we're going to go back into Miami, right? 
and make sure that Arias is out. Sort by status, actually. He's in. He's in. And then Cooper is out. Okay, so now all the projections are good. So now what we'll do is we'll go into entries. We'll put in, I think this is my, what happened? So DK entries, so DK entries. Okay, that's good. So the entries are in. We're going to late swap. And we're, again, we're going to do the 100 to 1,000, and but we're going to do a minimum of 49,300. And it's going to be for all that. All right, let's see. See if I can't make the stack changes I need to. Now it's 70% Minnow, which is my team stacks. That's all good. Washington. No, I want more Washington. <laughs> okay. And then, so San Diego, Colorado, Miami, Washington is fine. Players, I don't care too much about. Stack types. Yeah, so stack types, we're going to have to screw around here. So we can't have any three twos. That's a little bit too... Fancy, can't have any three threes. The rest, three two two. No, but maybe a three three two we could have. So these are all okay. Um, so we got players, nothing out of the ordinary. Team stacks, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, stack types, nothing out of the ordinary. Download new entries, boom. And now what we done, what we've done is we've changed our that minimum thing, and we've adjusted for a little bit of the of the of the scratches. So let's now go back and see if there's anybody that's not in. Now again, San Diego's lineup's not out yet either. Uh, there's Diaz. Ah, the Diaz is the one that I forgot about. All right, so let's go back. It's rough out there, right? This is why you're probably supposed to just do a. Why do I? Why didn't I have Diaz in my? Okay. Oh, Diaz on Tampa. Crap. Yeah, I got to go back to Tampa. It's one ten. All right, plenty of time. No problem. Diaz is out. Paradis is out. Siri is out. I can't talk to him right now. Sorry. And then. He's in, he's in, he's in, he's in. Good. And as I was saying, let's uh, do this again. Let's wait, swap. Boom. And looks like we're good. San Diego is the only one that hasn't confirmed yet. Stack types again, four two we can't do. Got the time. Four threes barely okay. We'll keep it. It's four game slate. Team stacks is fine. Nope, still want <laughs> still want that thirty percent Washington for some reason because we're gluttons. Uh, and then obviously it's less Snell and we should be good. So let's now download the new entries and then we'll upload these and we're still not finished because we have no San Diego lineups yet, but we'll deal with that later. Just want to make sure that I have nobody in my, um, in my uh, early games that are not playing. Mm. Looks pretty good. 
When I saw that I had some big lineup that was cashing for something. Why am I cashing for four thousand dollars? It's base. Now is it a baseball lineup where I have four points, or is it? Oh, no, it's a stupid tennis lineup. There's no chance. Uh, this one, this relay is off to a good start here. What is this? Ten points. What is it? A stolen base or something? No, you have a little bit of a just a couple of signals for St. Louis. I know we go. All right, uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody. Hopefully, it helped. Uh, I will uh, talk to you guys later.